Hey guys, so in today's video, you are gonna see a Traxxas guy finally get his hands on an Arma RC. You guys have been asking for so long for me to get an Arma, and you just, you know, every single video, you guys are like, you should get an Arma, you should get an Arma. So finally, I put a poll up on my channel. You guys voted, you decided on the Arma no Notorious. <laughs> and so I went and picked one up, and today we're gonna unbox it and get it driving around. And I have read your comments on my last video where you told me that I'm gonna have to swap the controller out because it's like laggy or something. And I have a controller just for this, and I am going to uh check the center differential because apparently it comes with like really thin fluid or something like that and hopefully i don't have to break this thing open if i do that's going to be horrible but i am going to judge this rc straight as it is out of the box and we're going to see how well it performs and how much i actually like this thing so let's get this box open and take a look at it uh, there we go it's a bag of stuff how we get this thing out of there we just I guess I just lift it up out. There we go. Peel back the plastic. Man, that's a good looking truck, isn't it? Stickers are peeling off of it already. But let's get those back on there. So here it is. And the first thing I notice all the stickers pretty much need to be pressed down onto the body so that's i don't know what that's about but they all are just kind of coming off of the body for some reason i don't know if they were not put on very well or or what but you can see they're lifting up on the edges in some places so it's been killing something i don't know what it is kills willies i don't know but it's a pretty good looking body. I like that matte finish on it. It's pretty good. The wheelbase is a lot shorter than I thought it was going to be. It's a very short wheelbase. Kind of don't like the way the chassis drops down below the truck body all that much. That looks kind of odd to me. For whatever reason. I don't know. It's pretty cool. I like it. Big wing on back of it. And Willie bar. Those are, oh, those are rubbery. That's unexpected. That's pretty cool. So, and just already turning it like this, that servo feels different than all the other servos, steering servos on my uh, Traxxas RCs. Well, I think it's pretty cool. Let's get this body off. Body pins, what are these? What are those? <laughs> so I haven't dealt with body pins in quite a while. I know I ran my TRX4 the other day and it has body pins on it, so but usually, I'm afraid I'm gonna break the little rubber piece on there. So that's ah, that's much harder than it should be. Seriously? Come on. You have got to be. Wow. Okay, got it. So the inside looks like. Oh, I thought the inside was supposed to be painted silver. And it's supposed to be like set up in such a way that if you scratch it, it's supposed to like show silver through. I don't know, is it silver on the inside? Like, is it like a base coat and then there's like silver underneath that? So when you scratch the body, like the paint on the outside, it scratches through and shows silver. That's what I thought it was supposed to be, but I don't know, maybe it does. There's that sticker, it's sticking up. Man, Armor, get your, your sticker game up the point. This is ridiculous. My first time really looking at the inside of a Arma. So it does have, in fact, have a metal chassis underneath there. It is pretty thick too, which, you know, it needs to be. Suspension, it's got little covers over the shocks. That's, that's pretty neat. It comes like that stock. Just looking through, I don't know all that much about the, the armor system, the way it's set up. Sure, I guess there's a servo saver inside of there. So. That's cool. And brace bars and everything. So. Yeah, it's pretty neat. Let's go get the Erevo and put it side by side to that. 
There it is, side by side between the Max and the Erivo. Yeah, it's just as, seems like it's almost as wide as the Erivo. A little wider than the Max. It's kind of between the two, size wise. It's got some pretty big wheels on there. And uh, not quite as long as the Erivo. So it sets up a little higher, at least body wise. The chassis and stuff, as far as ground clearance goes, it's higher. It's a lot higher than the Max is. So, but it's got much taller tires. Look how tall those tires are. And they're very knobby too. I bet they get very good traction. I'm gonna be honest with you. If the Revo and the Notorious are sitting in the hobby shop side by side, I mean, I think that Erivo is just so much better looking. It is just, I mean, it really is. Like I just, Armor just, I don't think they do that great of a job with designing their RCs with the exception of the, the Typhoon and the uh, Felony. The rest of them like the Crichton and the Outcast and the Notorious, I just don't think they are fantastic looking RCs, when you, especially when you compare them to the Revo and stuff. And it's raining. Oh, good. It's raining. Look at that. Ah, well. It's raining. I guess that's the end of the video. It is. It's actually. Okay, I got to get this stuff in. <laughs> Everything is wet now. It just. It really came down. My table is soaked. I brought my table in. And uh, let's get that light on. Yeah, you can see what little bit I did. There's, there's water all over it. Everything is wet. I uh, <laughs> I guess <laughs> the Traxxas guys are not pleased at my offering. <laughs> they were not happy at all. And they decided to rain on everything. I don't know, should I try to run it anyways in the, in the rain? I mean, it's not raining right this second. And that's how it was. I'm, I'm filming and then it started to rain and I'm like, I've got to get everything inside. And then when I did that, it stopped raining for a moment. And now I'm like, well, maybe it's just a little bit and I'll still run it. So then I start bringing everything out for the, um, for the thumbnail and it started raining again. And then I'm taking pictures for the thumbnail and it just starts raining more and more. I start rushing and getting everything in, then it stops again. And so I have a feeling when I bring the Notorious out, it's going to start raining again. Didn't rain that much. Uh, if it's raining at all, I'm not bringing my ramps out here. I don't want to get them wet. And, uh, I don't know. Let's let's try to run it and see if I can get anything done. <laughs> Please, Traxxas guys, be kind to me today. All right, we're getting this battery in this thing. This is the first time I've ever tried to put a battery into an Arma. Don't know what I'm doing. I'm going to edit a lot of this because this is super entertaining content. Watching some guy struggle with a strap for a battery. There we go. All right. So it's not so bad. Let's go ahead and turn the controller on. Plug this in. Power it on. Oh, woo! <laughs> it does a willy right away. It's pretty cool. Oh, that controller is laggy. Wow. I see what you guys mean. That is... That's like... Un, that feels so horrible. Wow. That is beyond... I, I don't even know how to describe it. It's distracting. It's, it's so, the, the steering is so laggy that it's distracting. <laughs> it's hilarious. It is hilariously bad. That's how I describe the steering. And look at it, it's, oh, it's dipping out too, I can tell. Like right then, you get a little speed onto it and pull the trigger. And we'll pick those front wheels up. But you can you can feel the, the differential in the center. Man, Arma is not making a good first impression, I gotta tell you. 
It does got a lot of power to it, at least. I left some leaves out here so I could play around in them. mess with the steering rate turn it up all the way it still feels really laggy and sluggish when you turn it doesn't get any traction out here when it's wet really and when it does it just it just dips out like right there I can feel the the front wheel spinning faster than the rear wheels by a good margin pull the ramp out all right you guys so far i'm not impressed with this little arma it, uh, it has plenty of power i can feel it but whenever those front wheels come off the ground i can really tell that it loses power to the front wheels and uh this i thought you guys were kind of exaggerating we said it was going to be laggy whenever i try to steer it or turn it or whatever that is an understatement it feels so unresponsive when you turn that wheel and uh, hopefully this is something I can fix by just swapping controllers. You guys said that's what you would have to do. So I'm going to do that. I'm not going to do it this video. This video, I am going to run it exactly how it comes out of the box. I'm not going to put differential fluid in the center of it. I'm not going to change out the controller. They say it's ready to run on the box. So that is what I'm going to do. I am going to drive it as if I just got the thing on like Christmas morning. It's ready to run. I break it open. And I take it outside and start playing with it. That's how I'm going to drive it today. Uh, I will do a video where I swap out the differential fluid and change out the controller and see if that adjusts the performance of it if that changes everything and makes it a, a much better rc and then we'll see where it goes from there so i'm not gonna you know totally say it's a piece of garbage yet uh we don't know but i am about to get it into the air we're gonna see how well it flies hopefully it does really well in the air it's a very heavy rc has that aluminum chassis on there and so hopefully it flies very nicely to try to demonstrate how thin the differential fluid is in that thing check this out when i pick this up i know you can't tell i can really feel look at it it is trying to turn the wheels on my hands it, it, it is really pushing against that center differential. You can really feel it when you turn the wheels. It is it is really trying to resist. This right here, it, it just feels like there's nothing to it. It's not even trying to turn the wheels in my hands. Like there's just I don't think I don't think there's anything in the center differential of that thing. All right, the uh, it's starting to rain again, of course, but uh, we're still going to get this thing in the air a little bit. So, I really don't want to roll it or anything. Well, there went that. Man, it is, it's, it's, it's kind of driving me crazy how unresponsive the steering is. And I can't tell how responsive it is in the air either. So, It is, even the throttle is unresponsive in the air. So. Hmm. Wonder if it'll do an ollie. Let's see if we can get it to do an ollie. I don't know. Uh, it doesn't have any traction. That. From the time I pull the trigger to the time it actually does something, look at this. What, notice how long it takes. You see that? I'm going to do that in slow motion. I can't tell like, like exactly how long it takes, but I can feel it. That makes me wonder if I can pull the trigger and let go of it before it even moves. Yeah, it seems like I am. I'm going to see if it plays back in slow motion because it really feels like it. It feels really laggy. All right, I got to show, show you guys how different it is between the Erevo and this Notorious with the controller wise. I mean, you can see. Now, watch this. And we try to turn them both at the same time, see if I can pull this off. 
I'm gonna slow it down in the video. So you can see, and you know, with the uh, throttle, you can see when I pull the trigger, this is when it goes. Watch this. It, it feels almost instant with the Revo. That is, it is such a difference. I can really tell. Hey guys, it's me from the future. I was editing the video and then I realized I didn't say anything about the punch setting because I know some of you right now are in the comments. You're blowing it up telling me I need to tell you change the punch setting. The punch setting comes from the factory on the setting of four. You can put it up to nine and you're probably thinking that gets rid of the delay in the throttle. It does not get rid of the delay. I know it may feel like it to you, but it does not. And I can tell the difference. I came out here and I recorded it, made a video of it on punch setting nine, just to show you guys that it has the exact same delay. On the Erevo, from the frame that the trigger starts to move to the frame that the tires start to move, it is five frames. On the Notorious, on setting punch setting four, it is 11 frames. And on punch setting nine, it is still 11 frames. So I knew what you guys were doing. I'm on to you. <laughs> and so I came out here and I filmed it just for you guys so you can see that it doesn't change the throttle delay at all. All right, I'm losing my daylight, but uh, it's actually not as dark on the camera as it is in person. But I do want to get some more jumps in on this thing. It does feel good in the air, like it, it, it flies nice. It, it's really stable, it feels like in the air. Look at that. that, that is actually a really good jump. So, I see the potential in the platform, I really do. You see, that, no throttle correction at all in the air. So, let's hit the bigger ramp. So I did have to correct it there, but it almost didn't work because I had, I cannot react when it needs to be reacted to. That, that terrified me. I, I, I almost didn't save it just then. Uh, it is, man, let's see if I can do a flip. I know they'll do flips. Let's, I, this, I'm so nervous doing this. Whoa, this thing flips fast. <laughs> All right, let's get maybe one or two more flips in. I am so nervous doing this. That, that lag is unacceptable. It really is. Like Arma, you guys, I hope with that new Spectrum equipment that comes with the uh, Arma RCs, I hope it solves that problem. I really do. That, it, I, I cannot react as fast as it needs to be reacted to. Yeah, it's, just, it's just that simple. It is, I, I don't know how else to put it. I, I, I don't want to flip it because I cannot react fast enough to, to save it. I can tell that it, it's it's really good on the ground. It feels really stable. It's got lots of power. So what does this Traxxas guy think of his first Arma? Well, to give you some idea, this is the fifth time I've tried to record this video where I'm trying not to make it into like a 30 minute rant, okay? <laughs> There's no more sunlight out there. Uh, it's nighttime, the daylight is gone because I have been trying to condense this down to like no more than five minutes and I'm not able to do it because that's how bad of an impression Armour has left on me 
today. I, when I first started getting into off-road RC, because I've been in the hobby for like 20 years, but I've always dealt with nitro street RCs. My first off-road RC was a two-wheel drive stampede. I walk in the hobby shop after going to watch the monster trucks and I want a monster truck. I've never been interested in those before. I got to drive like a T-Max before and I just wasn't impressed with those RCs back in the day. I just didn't like them for whatever reason. So I go in there looking for an off-road RC and I didn't want the X-Max. I didn't know if I was going to like it. And that's a lot of money for an RC to not like it. I didn't want the Revo because I thought it kind of looked kind of funny. I bought a two-wheel drive stampede. I take it home and uh, there's something flying around. I took it home and I loved it. I loved this little RC. I was sticking a GoPro on it. I was driving around the neighborhood, driving and jumping things and just having a blast with this little RC. It wasn't much longer I go to the hobby shop and pick up the V1 e Revo when the, uh, the, I guess the 6S had just come out, the brushless edition. And uh, I, I, I bought one and I love that RC. And I've been buying off-road RCs ever since. If I had bought this exact RC back then, it probably would have been the last off-road RC I've ever bought. It, it may have even just discouraged me from the hobby altogether. Uh, fortunately, I know that I can upgrade the stuff to make this a really good RC. But as it is out of the box, ready to run, you keep using those words, I do not think they mean what you think they mean. I, I out of the box, it's unacceptable. The amount of delay you have with the controller I don't know how, how does Armour get away with this? Why are they still doing this? This RC has been out for like two years. Uh, I think it's, I think it came out in like 2018 or something like that. If this is a problem that you guys know about, I mean, you guys told me it was going to happen, but not everyone has the resources to do this kind of research, right? Some people just go to the hobby shop and pick up one and no one says anything to them or they order it online. If someone were to get this on Christmas morning, I think that their experience isn't going to be that great because of how much of a delay it has. I mean, it is, I play video games. I play Call of Duty. I love video games. If you were to take the amount of delay you have in, in the controller of this RC, of this Notorious, if you were to take that delay and put it into the controls of a Call of Duty match, a Call of Duty player, you'd never win a gunfight. You'd come around the corner and, and by the time you got a bullet out of your gun, you'd be dead. There would be there'd be no, like, <laughs> you wouldn't stand a chance. You'd have to come around the corner, pre-firing every single time, just holding the trigger, hoping someone is there because you're never gonna beat them. Like, like once you see them pull the trigger, that kind of delay, nope, not happening. If you, there would be no online gaming communities at all if the controls had that kind of a delay. It just wouldn't be a thing. I just, this is unacceptable to me, it really is. I, I hope that the new electronics that the armor come with solves this problem. I don't know that it will. You know, as soon as the Spectrum RCs come out, the Spectrum uh, electronic armor come out, maybe I'll look at those, the, the Typhon that I plan on getting. Like if it comes with those, I'll pick it up, but I don't know. I see the potential in the platform, I really do. So I know you guys in the comments, you gotta do this. I know that, I know that. I'm fully aware I have got a controller out there that I'm going to bind to this thing and run it with that. I'm going to switch out the differential fluid. All right. I, I'm going to do that. The differential, uh, that's another issue. I don't know why armor does that, but those two problems I'm going to solve. All right. So don't think I'm just going to say, Hey, this is a horrible RC. I'm not saying that I, 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 I can see the potential in the platform. I really do. I see the potential in it. I know there's a good RC underneath there somewhere. I know there is. Um, I, I am going to swap out the differential fluid. I'm gonna change the controller. If I need to do anything else to get this thing to where it's going to run like, like it, it needs to, let me know down in the comments below. The delay with the servo, do I just need to get a whole new servo? Like, is that a problem with controller? Is it something that I'm gonna you know, fix with the ESC? I'm gonna look through the instruction manual, I'm gonna do some research. Uh, I'm going to try to get this thing to be a really good running RC. That's not the intent of this video, all right? This is a very strict, day that I get the RC, let's see how it runs kind of video. That's what this is. So don't go off in the comments. Oh, I know, I, I know. I'm not completely disappointed with it because I, I do realize that there is a really good RC 
underneath the bad of this RC. There's a lot of good. I mean, I, I, I like how it's built. I really do. I, I, I like how it flips. It flips so fast. It's a very, very fast flipping RC because the wheelbase is so short. I see the potential of it being a great stunt truck. I really do. I landed on the nose. There's paint on the outside of that body. It didn't go through the paint. I don't know how that paint survived <laughs> that impact. Like, I don't know what armor is putting on the outside of these bodies. That paint survived. I expect it to have scratches all over it. It really doesn't. I mean, I don't know if you can see the body and stuff. It looks really, really good still. So that's actually pretty, pretty impressive. I can't get it on there. I'm not gonna fight with it right now, but you know, it, I know there's great RC underneath there and I plan on getting this thing figured out. <sighs> and then I'll do a video of me upgrading it and things like that and getting it out here on a nice dry day and see how it runs. I'm really looking forward to it. By the way, if there's a downside to me changing the differential fluid, like am I gonna start breaking drive shafts? Let me down, let me know in the comments down below if there's a downside to it. Because lots of times whenever you change something like that, you know, you can make a weak point appear somewhere else. You know, something else is gonna go wrong. So let me know down in the comments below if there's something else I need to do or something else I need to be aware of. So, but that's all I got for you today, guys. This video is going to be long enough as it is. <laughs> thank you so much for watching. Uh, thank you for subscribing. Share the video if you like it. Like the video if you like it. I really do appreciate it, guys. Uh, this is the one you guys voted for. And this is the, ones, the one that I, I ran, the one that I got. <laughs> I know I joked for a lot. I can't speak. I can't speak. I, I, I'm, I'm exhausted. I'm drained from just trying to get this video done for the last you know hour or what have you but anyways <laughs> i know what i was saying or where i was going with it you know it's you know what i don't even care <laughs> hope you guys have a fantastic night have a fantastic week thank you so much for subscribing thank you for watching my video like it share it uh come back and see what i do with this thing later on in a future video and i will see you guys later